technology, it's the quality of the experiments is not so good. <coughs> so currently we focus on numerical studies. Um, I will introduce the background and motivation of this study first, then uh, the major theoretical formulation will be explained, and after that I will show some numerical results followed by the conclusion, and finally the future work, um, uh, what we are considering will be presented. Let me fr uh, start from the composite materials. Actually, what we studied here, the carbon nanotube, uh, reinforced composites are composite materials. So all of us may be familiar with these um, uh, common composite materials. They are widely used in general industry, like such as um, class fiber reinforced nylon, class fiber reinforced plastics, um, boron fiber reinforced plastics, and carbon fiber reinforced nylon. And also we have um, metal matrix composites as shown here, um, both light industry and heavy industry need them. And we have, and then we have ceramic composite materials. They have great um, uh, mechanical properties. They have great thermal properties. And they have excellent balance in stiffness, toughness, and uh, thermal characteristics. And we can find them being used in car industry um, in satellite and in aircraft industry. And now the leading role is carbon nanotubes. You're all familiar with this material. Okay. Um, because it has extremely high stiffness, it has it has outstanding mechanical properties, electronic properties and thermal properties. So we think about this naturally. If we introduce carbon nanotubes into matrix, maybe polymer matrix or metal matrix, the um, mechanical properties of the whole structure should be improved significantly, and that's what we have done. There's uh, another interesting property of carbon nanotube reinforced composite is that it is antibacterial, okay? So it, ca it is uh, uh, capable to reduce the microbial growth. And we can use this uh, material to deal with biofouling in marine environments, in uh, maybe ocean engineering. Okay. Um, so before the real application of FGCNT reinforced composites, we have to do numerical modeling. We have to find out the detailed mechanical behaviors of these composites. So in this study, we select uh, single watt carbon nanotubes as a reinforcement, and uh, we assume that um, it is to be uniaxially aligned in the axial direction and uh, functionally graded in the thickness direction of the plates. And uh, of course, shells is the same thing. Actually, there are four types of distributions of uh, CNTs in, uh, in the reinforced composites. Um, the most common one is uniform distribution, and we also have V-type. That means uh, for this type, the top surface uh, of the plate is CNT rich. And we also have O-type. That means the uh, mid plane of the plate is CNT rich, and also have uh, X-type. That means the, both the top and bottom surface of the plates are CNT rich. OK, now, it's, uh, now let's do uh, the, the modeling. Um, the basic idea of modeling is, is like this. First, we need to know the effective material properties of these nanocomposites. The method we use is extending the rule of a mixture, as I show here. Um, actually, we can have the um, material, um, the, the, the efficiency parameters of both CNTs and the matrix for experiments. So we can have it's uh, young modulus, it's Poisson ratio of both CNTs and the matrix. Then we use the extended rule of a mixture to calculate the efficiency parameters of the whole structure. That, that was uh, what we have done. And in this example, we compare the uh, results from standard rule of a mixture with the uh, empty results. And we find that they 
agree well with each other. That means the result from standard rule of a mixture it's, um, it, it's accurate. So we can use these param parameters to do the further study. After that, we can use the, the first order shear deformation theory to um, construct the governing equations. Okay, we use this FSDT to incorporate the effect of transverse shear deformation. That is first order shear deformation theory. According to this, this theory, each point at the um, displacement field has five uh, degrees of freedom. There are three translation displacements and two rotations. After that, um, we have to solve the equations. How can we solve the PDEs? How can we solve the um, both linear equations and nonlinear PDEs? We use element-free method. That is the method we use. Actually, there are many element-free methods proposed by different researchers. What we use is element-free IMLS with method. Why we use method? Um, there are a few um, advantages of this method. Okay, the major advantage is that we do not need to distribute meshes over the computa computational domain. We use nodes instead of meshes. So this method is well suited to the treatment of discontinuities such as crack growth, especially dynamic crack growth. Another, uh, another advantage is it has um, the method use non-local approximation. So it's very appropriate for nonlinear problems, uh, large deformation problems, post buckling problems. And this method also employs shape functions with high order discontinu uh, high order continuity. Okay? So it's available for materials with a strain gradient effect. And uh, um, this IMLS RIS method also uses weighted ortho orthogonal basis function, the, then it avoids forming an ill-conditioned or a single equation system. Oh. This is the energy functional based on the energy method. We can es establish the energy functional. We have strain energy, kinetic energy, and external work. Then we can derive uh, different governing system equations from the um, energy functional for different problems. Uh, for example, for bending problems, we, uh, we can have KU equal to F, then we solve U for the displacement. And for free vibration problem, we have an omega, the frequency. For buckling problem, we have lambda, the buckling load. And for nonlinear problems and large deformation post buckling, we will solve, we, we will have U. Uh, that is nonlinear deformation. Okay, now let me show some results, some numerical results. Um, this is uh, this example we consider here. It's uh, about triangular plates. We do vibration analysis on these triangular plates. This is the geometry. Um, um, uh, generally, when we do numerical studies, first we have to do comparison study and conversion study to determine whether this method is accuracy, whether this method is um, effective. Okay? And from, from our results, we can find that the presented results agrees well with the results from available references. So uh, these solid lines are present results and this one is the solution from available references. We can find them agree well with each other. Okay? And this method is also has satisfied convergency. Here, uh, there are two important factors for this method. One is uh, the number of uh, nodes. Another is DMAC, that is a scaling factor. And from here, um, that is parametric study. We do parametric studies to examine the effects of many um, factors on the vibration behavior of these plates. These effects conclude um, CNT volume fraction ratios, um, CNT distributions, 
the height to uh, y ratios. And we also consider different boundary conditions. These are the uh, free vibration mode shapes of CNT a composite um, triangular plate with different side angles, theta. And we also do Buckley analysis. Uh, this is an, an example for skew plate. Um, we, use, we use mapping. Okay, it's a, a use mapping method to transformate the actual skew physical domain to the square computational domain. So that will be easier to for us to enforce a boundary condition. Uh, the similar conversion study and comparison study um, as the previous cases. And we also do parametric studies to examine the effects of um, skill angles, the uh, CNT distributions on the critical buckling load of these plates. Here's the effects of thickness to height ratio. And uh, this is the effects of plate expect ratio and uh, uh, the side angles on the critical buckling load of the skill plates. All right, here's the nonlinear analysis framework for the nonlinear problems for the large deformation for the post buckling. Okay, um, what we are doing is first we have a um, discretized nonlinear governing system equation. Then we start uh, the, the load loop. We use arc length method and Newton-Raphson method to